We all know Earth is flat, <clears throat> a round spinning sphere. But how do we prove this? French physicist Leon Foucault came up with a brilliant idea and built a large pendulum. The point being that the ball will not only swing back and forth, but rotate as well. But why on Earth would this prove Earth is a spinning sphere? To answer this question, we need to first understand why the pendulum rotates. Let's place the pendulum on top of the North Pole. Now imagine the ball bobbing back and forth while Earth beneath it spins counterclockwise. From this perspective, the pendulum is fixed while Earth rotates beneath it. No mystery here. But let's observe from the surface of the planet next to the pendulum. From this perspective, it's the pendulum that rotates while we perceive Earth to be stationary. Furthermore, the pendulum will be rotating clockwise once every 24 hours. This effect will reverse itself if the pendulum is on top of the South Pole. So from over the South Pole, Earth spins clockwise while the pendulum remains fixed. But if you're standing on the surface, it's the pendulum that spins, specifically counterclockwise. But what happens when we move the pendulum away from the poles? We know we need to keep the pendulum fixed just as we did before at the poles. But unlike when the pendulum was at the poles, it's now being flung around Earth's axis. So it's a bit unclear what fixed looks like in this context. For this, we need the help of a visual aid. First, draw a circle. Let's call the midpoint O, the radius R, and these two points A and B. Now let's draw a few parallel lines in any random direction. This will be the direction our pendulum bobs upon. It will bob along that line if on point O, A, B, or any other point. This will be what we mean when we say the pendulum is fixed. Then, cut a line from point A to O and drag point A toward point B. Think three-dimensionally. Our flat circle will slowly become a cone. Let's represent the overlapping sector in gray. Next, we put this cone over the North Pole, so that point O is on Earth's axis. Adjust the cone so that the cone touches Earth only at a certain latitude line. Let's call this latitude theta degrees and call Earth's radius E. Now, when we set it up like this, R just happens to be E times cotangent theta. And the circumference of the cone will be 2 pi E cosine theta. If you want the math, here it is. Stop the video if you want to examine it. Next, place the pendulum right where the cone meets Earth. And don't forget to align the pendulum with the parallel lines we drew on the cone. As Earth rotates, our pendulum is flung around Earth's axis. But remember, it needs to be fixed as previously discussed. So by the time it reaches the next parallel line, it needs to have rotated a little bit clockwise in order to continue swinging along the path of these lines. Let's do this for all the points where the parallel lines touches Earth. We can now visually understand why from the perspective of someone on the surface, the pendulum rotates. It's because the pendulum is still fixed on the cone as it's being flung around Earth. Coming back to points A and B, by the time the pendulum reaches point B, 24 hours will have passed and Earth will have made a full rotation. But notice that our pendulum has not yet completed its rotation. This is because the pendulum needs to rotate back to where it started, point A, before it can make a complete turn. Look back at the original circle. The gray section we created when we overlapped parts of the circle to make our cone is the reason our pendulum needs to travel the extra distance arc BA before it can return to point A. The longer the arc length, the more time needed to complete the turn. Let's put this into numbers. If it takes our pendulum 24 hours to travel the length of 2 pi e cosine theta, and if it takes our pendulum t number of hours to travel the length of 2 pi r back to point A, then the following relationship holds. Solve for t, using r equals e cotangent theta, we get t equals 24 hours divided by sine theta. For example, in Paris, France, which has a latitude of 49 degrees north, it takes 32 hours for a pendulum to make a complete turn. We can see from this equation that as the latitude gets closer to 90 degrees, the value of sine theta gets closer to 1, and thus t gets closer to 24 hours. Another way of thinking about this is to imagine the cone getting flatter and flatter until it's just a flat disk on top of the North Pole. You can see that the pendulum is fixed along the parallel lines while Earth happily rotates beneath it. And if we go the other direction, we notice the cone getting taller and taller until it just becomes a cylinder, and the pendulum doesn't rotate at all. In fact, if you look at the equation above, as theta gets closer to zero degrees, 
the value of sine also gets closer to zero, and the time needed for one rotation becomes infinitely long. In other words, it doesn't turn at all. There are countless Foucault pendulums all across the world, usually one in every science museum and universities with a strong science department. If Earth wasn't a spinning sphere, the relationship t equals 24 hours divided by sine theta would not predict the rotation of these many pendulums if they even turned at all. But as it turns out, every single pendulum around the world rotates exactly as Foucault predicted they would if Earth were a round rotating globe. And that's how we know Earth is a spinning sphere rather than a flat disk. <laughs> Stick sense. Thank you for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already.